Yay. Do you think you know much about maps? Maybe you are impressive enough to draw the map from memory. Probably not. But did you know that the Mercator projection is lying to you? This is the Mercator projection, a map as you know it. It is a type of cylindrical projection that is seen everywhere. However, it makes the Northern Hemisphere appear much larger in comparison than the Southern Hemisphere. Let's do some land comparisons to better enlighten you. For this example, we'll use Australia and Greenland. Here they are side by side according to the Mercator map. And this is how they should compare on the map. This is how the area really is. Even if the Mercator projection tries to trick you otherwise, in reality, it would take about three and a half Greenlands to match the size of Australia. Another example, look at Africa, then look at Greenland again. I am about to blow your mind. It looks about the relative size of Africa. Think again. Africa is almost 14 times larger than Greenland. Do you see this outrage? And if that's not enough to blow your mind, this is Greenland. And this is Iceland. And if I haven't yet, it's time to stagger what you thought you knew even further. Diving in further to Africa, let's take a look at Madagascar. We will compare it to Svalbard combined with Jan Mayen. It looks, well, about two times larger than Madagascar, I would say. BAM! The cold, hard truth. Madagascar is 9.4 times larger than Svalbard and Jan Mayen. This is insane. You know what else is crazy? The size of Antarctica. It appears like a monster able to out-area any other landmass. So, I will compare it to Asia. It's no match. Even all of Asia cannot compare to the monstrosity of Antarctica. Well, that would be very, very wrong. And in case you didn't know, the shape of Antarctica is more like this. And the size of Antarctica is more like this. It would take about three Antarcticas and another fifth of one to match the size of Asia. Oh, and not only is the areas distorted on the Mercator projection, but the shape isn't quite spot on in some locations either. Just look at Canada, for example, especially all the islands. Here it is on Mercator, and this is how Canada is supposed to look on maps. Even if it is impossible to perfectly project the Earth on a flat surface, the Mercator projection does an unnecessarily horrible job at this task. Luckily, there are many other projections that I think are much more accurate than Mercator's. So, let's make the transition to a few better map projections. Here is the Gall Peters projection. It is a much better projection than Mercator's. The relative area is perfect. That's why it's called an area accurate map. Just like the Mercator's map, this is another cylindrical projection. This picture is good for showing how cylindrical projections work. So anyway, the area in the Peters projection is accurate, but there is an issue with it. The shape of the land is off by a lot. Here is how the Peters projection of Africa compares to how Africa actually looks. On this map, Africa doesn't look like Africa. So, Peters really isn't the best option either. The following are my two favorite map projections. Pause for dramatic effect. Winkle, triple, and Goods interrupted. This is my second favorite projection, Good Home Allison. Here, I have the name on the screen for title clarification. Though I do like how accurate this map is, I acknowledge some flaws. It can be very confusing, since it is all split up, similar to an orange peel. There is another particular issue with this map. While all other landmasses are intact, Greenland is split right down the middle. Well, it's hard to tell what Greenland looks like with this map, and the splits in the ocean can be a little confusing as well. And I don't want any confused pandas, so I present to you the map I recommend, my favorite map, the Winkle Triple Projection. This is a great map because it minimizes the distortion of the three main map struggles area, direction, and distance. This is the map that should be used every day and in textbooks. While it still isn't perfect, since displaying the Earth on a flat map is impossible, it is one of the best maps available. So here's the question, why are we still using the Mercator projection? Here you go. This is the man who created the Mercator projection. His name, Gerardus Mercator. He's a Flemish or Belgian Dutch geographer and cartographer. I will use the Winkle Triple map to show you where Belgium is. There it is between France and Germany. So anyway, the Mercator map was created after the peak of European exploration, which explains why the use of this map is nautical, while the distortion of shape and area is very noticeable. 
He created the projection in 1569, so I'm sure, at the time, his map was pretty good. One of the better ones. The Winkle Triple was created much later in 1921 by Oswald Winkle. So why haven't we moved on to these more modern, better maps? It can be hard for society to change. That's a problem that is present in many different issues. Change is slow. Even though the Winkle Triple was introduced about a century ago, it still hasn't become very popular. My prediction for the reason of this is, because Mercator was used for so long, people became conditioned to it, which caused Winkle Triple, when introduced, to appear wrong. I have a confession about the Mercator map. While it isn't horrible for every day and should be wiped for most textbooks, it does actually have a practical use. Perhaps you have noticed that Google Maps uses the Mercator projection. The reason for this is the street view. In Mercator, the right angles are preserved because of how square it is. When other projections are used, ones that are curved on the sides, zooming into street view, especially in more northern or southern points, causes intersections that are normally right angles to become warped due to curved longitudinal lines found on projections. Using the Mercator map with straight longitudinal lines fixes this problem. However, in most cases, the Mercator projection shouldn't be used. This is just an exception. The reason Google Maps needed Mercator is because of the feature where you can zoom in from your house to the world, so it is particularly difficult for them to avoid serious distortion somewhere. National Geographic, however, has adapted the Winkle Purple projection as it is preferable for regular use. I do have good use about the development of maps. Yay! Quite a while after Arthur Robinson created his projection in the 1960s, there has been an increase in the usage of the Robinson map, which is a big improvement from the Mercator map. So we are moving on to making improvements. But if you really want an accurate representation of the Earth, maybe you should just try a globe. See you next time on Science with Ella. Yay.